Okay, so where we left off, I was showing you how we can make selections and then move those selections in PhotoP between different layers. So I selected that inside of the cat, right? And I deleted it from these other layers. But I could also move that selection. So here's that selection from inside the cat. But I can also click inside of the selection and move it around and almost use this as a stamp. So if I wanted to delete this from this layer, I could, right? And kind of have that shape echoed in different places. But ultimately, once you have all your layers, they are rasterized, they're on multiply, so you're seeing through them. That means with whether you have a background or not, this is every pixel you see. And then you might find, find uh, like tweak it. I don't really like this cat here. So I'm going to take my lasso. I'm going to find the layer it belongs to. And then I'm simply going to select that layer. And maybe I'll just leave the cat's head. But I'm going to delete out the body. And then maybe I decide I do want it. I just don't want the head. And now I made a selection, but I accidentally cut off part of the tail. So I can do Command-Z. What's nice about making a selection with the lasso is you can also alter that selection. So this is a good lesson. So let's say I, I select a little too much. I accidentally cut off part of the tail. I'll make it easier to see by turning off these other layers. So if I hold down Option, you'll see a change up here. The default selection means each thing you select and close will be a brand new selection. It will deselect any old selections. When you hold down shift, it will turn to what's called additive, where you can add to your selection. So I could say, oh, I decided I want to add also the body to my selection. And I was doing this with my mouse or my trackpad, so it can be a little wonky. If I want to be more precise, I can use a tablet. And then let's say, oh, I didn't want to get this tail. So if you hold down Option, it goes to subtracting from the selection. So now anything I select will be dis subtracted from my last one. And then I want to subtract the body as well. So you can get pretty complicated selections this way. And then I can just delete. Now, if I turn on my other layers and I feel like I'm pretty happy with how they are, then I can be ready to turn it in and save it. But I can also always go back and play with it. So I'm looking at this big cat that's very, very central, very dark, and very grounded. So maybe I want that big cat. I'm going to select that layer. And I want to not have it just straight up and down. So I want to go to Edit, Free Transform. And maybe I want to play with flipping it. So I'll right click and flip it horizontally. And maybe I want to play with rotating it. And my favorite, maybe I want to right click and play with warping it. And now because I have certain parts of the, of the image deleted, I can see more now like how I can make things line up with the cat's skeleton or with its stomach or, or with these other features. And I can kind of push and pull it into a place I think is the most visually interesting. You're not graded on making these exercises into art, right? You're just graded on meeting the requirements or not. But it's always fun to have it kind of express your own visual taste. All right, now I'm ready to turn it in. If there's nothing else I want to delete or transform or edit, I might get rid of this little cat. I think all these little cats are distracting to me. So I just might make a big selection there. It will only affect the layer I have selected. 
ah, but I kind of need something there. So this is the other great thing about selections that we haven't done, is I can take just a part, a part of a layer, and then I can edit and transform just that selection within the layer. So if I want to make this cap bigger and rotate it, it will actually affect the other pixels in that layer. You see how the white pixels now, even though it's on multiply mode, are covering up the pixels that were there before. And then I can deselect and see how that looks. How did you get there so that was making a selection within a layer. So I use my lasso and let's say I want to select this guy. And just like we can do with the whole layer, I can go to edit, free transform, but because I have a selection, it's only going to transform that selected area. And I can make it bigger, I can rotate it, I can warp it, and this can really customize that line art as well. Then you hit return, and then you want to hit command D to deselect. All right. So if I think that looks good, what do I need to do? I need to say file, save as PSD, make sure the name is what I want it to be, which will be my name and then some sort of description. And then I'm going to save it to the desktop. So whenever I get to this save where navigation pop up, I'm going to do command D, save it to the desktop. And then I can see it on the desktop by ho holding F in F11. I can mark it with green, right? But the problem is I can't post a PSD file to Canvas. If I try, they're just too big and they're not an online format. They're a format that takes lots and lots of memory. So if I start my post here, I only have to worry about number one to get credit we don't worry about number two and imgur until the end of the semester, once we've picked our final portfolio pieces. So I always start a post with my name, what I want to be called in the class, and then to try to post it, I click on the image upload, and then I drag in my PSD, and it's going to be broken. You know, it's not able to do it. So what I need to do is to be able to save my image out of PhotoP as an online format. So these are called digital formats, right? The way you do that in PhotoP is you say export as. And we're going to export it as a JPEG for just our basic black and white one. It's going to come in really big because it's showing you its actual resolution. Don't worry about that. You don't need to make any changes here. We don't need to attach any metadata. We can take the quality all, all the way up to 100% and save. And the problem is it's going to save to our downloads. So you have to pull it out of your downloads, but it's a JPEG, put it to your desktop. And I mark my online formats with orange. Right. Just to show you the difference, if I right click and, and get the info on my PSD file, it's 11 megabytes, which is not big in terms of image standards, but because that's multiple layers, right? But if I get info on the JPEG, it's only two megabytes. So online file formats will always be a lot smaller and they won't support layers. They're also not perfect quality. They're what's called a loss format. It's like rounding numbers up and down, but they're good for posting online. So now if I do the same thing and I use the upload image icon to put it underneath my name, if trying to attach that Photoshop thing didn't glitch it terribly, <laughs> which sometimes it can do, which is why I try to show you what not to do. Yeah, so it glitched it. So I'm going to exit that page, <laughs> get back into Canvas, and don't worry, it can all be fixed. But Photoshop files are not compatible with websites. You can attach them and take up a ton of memory, but that's not what we want to do. We want to be able to post.
So we're in unit two, we're at the very end of unit two, posting our exercise. Because I never was able to hit post, mine doesn't show up. So I'm gonna start it again. Say Carl, Fry. Use the three dots to get to the upload image. When I get to upload image, if I bring in my orange one, my JPEG, it's gonna come in nicely. And then just like we did on our early assignments or getting to know you projects, I'm gonna shrink that down so it fits nicely under my name and then hit post reply. And then it will show up. Now I've met all the requirements. There are at least five black line things that are merged together and I altered them, I messed with them. It's not just like a wallpaper of five things. It's, I played with them in some way. Maybe it looks good, maybe it looks awful. It meets the requirements it will get two out of two points on an exercise. But if I wanna invest in it a little bit more and explore a little bit more of what it can do, I have these bonus finishing extras. There's always more we can do. And instead of letting it just be black lines, I want to fill those black lines with something else. So I'm going to look up, and I'm just going to use Google Images for this, and I'm going to look up a cat wrapping paper. There's no shortage, right? Good old Walmart. If I want them to be bigger images, what do I need to do in Google Images? I go to Tools, and I sort them by large. And I want to find something kind of colorful and weird. I think that would be fun. So yeah, this one, this photo collage from Walmart might work. I'm going to right click. It's interesting. It's not giving me the usual options I would expect. Let's see, let's just go right to the site. See if I can save this image or open this image in a new tab. That's how you can check it. So it's this big. It's a little smaller than what we needed for our line art, but it's actually going to work for the wrapping paper aspect. Then I'm going to go to Photopea. I'm going to drag this in. It's what's called a, a web photo, which is a, an interesting new type of format that's only been around the last five years. And it's to protect images on websites that can be a little trickier to work with, but you can still work with them. I'm going to grow it so that, like wrapping paper, I have enough to, to cover my whole composition. Then I'm going to hit return. I'm going to move it behind everything. All right, then I'm going to turn it off. Now what I need to do to clean it up is I need to take all of these layers and merge them together. All the ones that are turned on. And I'm going to do that by first holding down shift and selecting all of them. So they're all gray. Then I go up to layer and before I click merge layers, I'm gonna hold down option, okay? And what that's gonna do is it's gonna make a combined layer on top of all my separate layers. Now let me show you why it's important to hold down option. If you select all of them that you like, and then you just go to layer, merge layers, it's going to collapse all those layers into one layer. So I don't want to do that. I want to hold down Option while I go to Layer and Merge Layers. And that way I get the best of both worlds. I get all my individual components that I can work with if I need to, and I've got a combined layer at the top. Now you'll notice that combined layer is no longer in multiply mode, so it's got white pixels. How do we get ri rid of the white pixels? We go back to that magic wand tool, and this time we uncheck contiguous. This means if I click on white pixels anywhere, it will select the white pixels everywhere in that combined layer. And then I hit delete, and then command D to deselect. And now all I have left are black pixels. If I need to make sure they're black pixels, I can use my image adjustments. So I go to Image Adjustment Levels. That's the only one we're going to learn for this project. And I can increase the lightness of the light pixels and the darkness of the dark pixels. And now I just have solid black pixels 
very clean. 